much, Lydia. Let's move to uh, Reverend. Uh, it, it's all very good for all this to happen, but if UNEP's work does not lead to concrete action, it, it doesn't amount to much. And you come from a slightly different direction. So speak to us about the place of faith-based organizations, such as the one you represent in this entire conversation, from the perspective of making UNEP's work count in real concrete environmental actions. Thank you, Jim. Excellencies, distinguished representatives, colleagues, and friends from civil society, and greetings to those who are joining us online, as they say when you come to UNEP, Karibuni Sana. Gath Speth, the former advisor to President Bill Clinton, said this, I used to think that the top global environmental problems were biodiversity loss, ecosystem collapse, and climate change. I thought that with 30 years of good science, we could address these problems, but I was wrong. The top environmental problems are selfishness, greed, and apathy. And to deal with those, we need a spiritual and cultural transformation, and we scientists do not know how to do that. In order to have concrete action on a scale that can save this planet, we have to start with the transformation of our values. We need to move away from an extractive view of the earth as a resource to be used towards a relationship world where plastic pollution is a thing of the past, where the oceans and the forests flourish again, where no child goes to bed hungry. We do not have another 50 years. Without a massive global movement, we will leave a barren and bleak world for our children and our grandchildren to inherit. The challenge for UNEP is to move from being an institution to becoming a movement that brings together politicians, civil society, environmental leaders, faith leaders, and young people in a vision for the restoration of this planet. The medium-term strategy says that UNEP will promote faith communities for two reasons. Firstly, because of their values-based perspective on environmental sustainability, and secondly, because of their potential reach to billions of people. We offer values and reach. Faith for Earth is beginning to make this a reality. Faith groups are accessible. They are to be found in the most remote rural village, the poorest informal settlement, and the wealthiest suburb. Can UNEP reach an isolated village in South Sudan? A faith leader can. Faith communities are acceptable. Rooted in the local community and culture, they have high levels of acceptability, sometimes higher than state or foreign organizations. They can provide a moral compass. Faith communities can facilitate a change in values and behavior. In Uganda, 96% of the population are affiliated with a faith community. The scriptures of all major religions have key texts on being stewards of the earth and the moral dangers of greed and abuse of the poor and the earth. Faith leaders interact with their consistency, consti constituencies on a weekly basis. What must be done so that faith communities can be part of the UNEP movement to translate policies into concrete action? President Nelson Mandela said, when you speak to me in a language that I understand, you speak to my head. But when you speak to me in my own language, you speak to my heart. The Church of South India celebrates World Environment Day in each of its 15,000 congregations. They translate the materials into five local languages. But more importantly, they translate them into the faith language, the language of hymns and songs and prayers and sermons that lead to action. The reach of faith communities is huge. The Pope has 18.8 .8 million followers on Twitter. UNEP has 1.1. Can UNEP become a movement? Can it contribute to the saving of this beautiful blue planet? The IPCC report is bleak. The situation in Ukraine is devastating. And I would like to end with adapting some words from Christiana Figueres, a woman of great faith. When it comes to climate change, pollution, and biodiversity loss, 
the vast majority of us have a learned reaction of helplessness. We see the direction the world is headed and we throw up our hands. Yes, it is terrible, but it is so complex and so big and so overwhelming, we can't do anything to stop it. This learned response is not only untrue, it is fundamentally irresponsible. No that you are incredibly lucky to be alive at a time when you can make a transformative difference to the future of all life on earth. You are not powerless. Your every action is suffused with meaning. You are part of the greatest chapter of human achievement in history. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Reverend. I was, I was, I was. I was almost interrupting you and you're going over the time, but I was, I was brought up never to interrupt a reverend when they're speaking. But very powerful points there uh, around the transformation of values. Uh, I think that would be worth exploring later on and creating a whole movement as opposed to just the institution. The last words to the reverend. Thank you. I think I would like to say that UNEP is us. Archbishop Tutu said, do your little bit of good where you are. And it's a little bit of good that will overwhelm the world. Yesterday, we were in the Karura Forest and the Anglican Church of Kenya has made a, an agreement with Karura Forest right here. They're going to adopt for the next three years, 3,000 hectares, and they're going to plant 30,000 trees because they own, they want Karura Forest to be a beautiful place where people can come. The challenge when you plant trees is how do you water them? So they are going to have prayer walks and as you pray and you walk in the forest, you take your water with you and you water your trees. If we all can do our little bits of good where we are, we can overwhelm the world. Mm -hmm.